Welcome to this lesson. In our last lecture, we had derived the formula for calculating the distance between two points, P1 and P2. And that formula was given as the distance between point P1 and P2 is equal to the square root of <coughs> y2 minus y1 all squared plus x2 minus x1 all squared. So today we shall demonstrate how this formula can be applied in calculating the distance between any two points. So we shall look at the following example. Example. Calculate the distance dp1 p2 between the points. The first point is p1 is minus 1 comma 2 and p2 is 2 comma minus 2 and the second point we have the second problem here point p1 is 2 comma 3 and point p2 is 5 comma 7 so for the first one i p1 has a coordinate negative 1 and 2 and p2 has a coordinate 2 and negative 2. So the distance between point P1 and point P2 is equal to what? We have square root of y2 when we define. Recall we had said earlier that these pairs are ordered pairs. That is to say that for the point P1, the first coordinate x minus negative 1 is your x1, and this is your y1, and then for P2. We have x2 and y2. So we put we substitute these values into this formula one. So y2 minus y1 would mean y2 is negative 2, negative 2 minus y1, y1 is 2. So negative 2 minus 2 all squared plus x2 minus x1. X2 is 2 minus x1 is negative 1 so that is minus minus 1 all squared and this will give us the square root of negative 2 negative 2 or minus 2 minus 2 is minus 4 and minus 4 squared is 16 plus 2 minus minus 1 is what this will give us 2 plus 1 because minus times minus is plus all squared so 2 plus 1 is 3 and 3 squared is 9 16 plus 9 gives us the square root of 25 which is nothing but 1 5 so what we are saying in essence is that is this that if we sketch for example let's not just do this let's just do this What we are saying is that if we sketch, for example, so the point P1, so we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, and so on, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, 1, 2, 3, for example. Now, point P1 is what has coordinate minus 1 and 2. This is minus 1. So, this is my and 2. So, minus 1 and 2. This is the point. So, P1 is minus 1, comma 2. And the point P2 is 2, comma, minus 2. P2 is 2, comma, minus 2. So, P2 is here. So, this is 2, or minus 2 is here. P2 is here. So, this is P2. 2 comma minus 2 so we are saying we are saying that the distance from p1 to p2 this distance we are saying that the distance from p1 to p2 is what is 5 that is it that is it that is the interpretation of what <coughs> we have just calculated okay let us proceed to to get the distance for the second problem for the second problem we have p1 with coordinates 2 comma 3 and p2 
the coordinates 5,7. So the distance again between P1 and P2 is given by the formula square root of y2 minus y1 all squared plus x2 minus x1 all squared. Once again, these pairs are ordered. So this is x1, y1, x2, and y2. So this gives us the square root of y2 minus y1. y2 is 7. y1 is 3. All squared plus x2. x2 is 5 x1 is 2 again all squared so this will give us the square root of 7 minus 3 is 4 and 4 squared is 16 plus 5 minus 2 is 3 and 3 squared is 9 again 16 plus 9 is root 25 and root 25 once again is 5 so we observe that the distance between the points P1, 2, 3 and P2, 5, 7 once again is 5. Of course, the distance is not always 5. Okay. So we shall take another example. Questions says, prove that the triangle with vertices a minus 1 minus 3 b 6 comma 1 and c 2 comma negative 5 is a right angled triangle <clears throat> after that they say we should find its area so we want to use the the concept of this idea of of distance between two points on a plane to answer this question so the first thing we want to attempt to do is we like to attempt to sketch to see how this point look like on the plane. So we have our plane this way. So this is say one, this is zero. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Say seven if you like. Negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six if you like. Negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. Of course, it goes on and on. And here we have one, two, three, four, five. And of course, it goes on and on again. So the first point A has coordinates negative one and negative three. So let us check where that falls. Negative 1 is here and negative 3 is here. So if we trace it, you see that these two lines meet at this point. So that is our point A. The next point is 6 and 1. 6 and 1. This is 6 and this is 1. So this is this point here. That is 6, 1. And the last point C is 2, negative 5. 2 on the x-axis, this is 2 on the x-axis, and negative 5 on the y-axis. So we have to include minus 5. So 2 and minus 5. Minus 5 and 2, they meet somewhere here. So this is our point. Point A is minus 1, minus 3. Point B is 6, 1. And point C is 2 comma negative 5 so if we join this point we see that we join the point we join the point and we join this other point good so we have sketch this is a rough sketch of what this point gives to us and the question is we should prove that this triangle this triangle a b c is actually what a right angled triangle Okay, it's actually a right angle triangle. So, what we're going to do, the, the way we go about this problem is this. We are going to find the distance or the distances between the three points on this triangle and use some properties of triangle 
to determine if the triangle indeed is right angle or not. So, the first thing we want to do is we want to calculate we want to calculate the distance between point A and B. So, distance A and B. And of course, our distance formula remains y2 minus y1 all squared plus x2 minus x1 all squared. So this gives us square root of, remember, ordered pairs. So for A and B, our, this is our x1, x1, y1, x2, and y2. So y2 for A and B, y2 is 1 minus y1 is minus 3. So that is minus, minus 3 all squared plus x2 is 6 minus x1 is minus 1 so that is minus minus 1 all squared and this gives us what so 1 minus minus 3 is 1 plus 3 which is 4 and 4 squared is what is 16 plus 6 minus minus 1 minus times minus becomes plus so this becomes 6 plus 1 which is 7 and what is 7 squared 7 squared is 49 so if we add this up we have the square root of what 65 so if we take the square root of 65 we shall have a decimal number so it is advisable we leave it in this form let us go ahead and find the distance between point b and c distance bc between these two points this distance here so this distance is root 65 so distance between point b and c is still y2 minus y1 all squared plus x2 minus x1 all squared and this gives us so of course when it comes to distance it doesn't matter which of the points you use as y1 or y2 because of the square so i can use it so this my this is x1 y1 x2 y2 if you like you can use x1 y1 x2 y2 because of the square we have here all right so whatever you use here it doesn't matter it doesn't matter actually so let us go ahead so this is my x1 y1 and my x2 y2 so y2 is negative 5 minus y1 is 1 all squared plus x2 is 6 minus x1 is 2 all squared and this gives us the square root of <coughs> minus 1 minus minus 5 minus 1 is minus 6 and minus 6 squared is 36 plus 6 minus 2 is 4 and 4 squared is 16 so if we add this up we have the square root of 52 so the distance between point b and point c is nothing but the square root of what 52 we now take uh, to the last distance so the distance between point a and c because we have done for point a b b c the, the, the running one is a and c or if you like you can say point c no problem so we have again square root of y2 minus y1 all squared plus x2 minus x1 all squared equal to here i want to use this as our x1 y1 and x2 y2 so y2 is minus 5 minus y1 is minus 3 minus 3 all squared plus x2 or x2 is 2 minus x1 minus minus 1 all squared and this gives us the square root of minus 5 minus minus 3 now minus times minus 3 
becomes plus 3. So that minus 5 plus 3 is minus 2. And minus 2 squared is 4. Plus 2 minus minus 1. Minus times minus 1 is plus 1. So that 2 plus 1 is 3. And 3 squared is what? Is 9. So we have that 9 plus 4 is the square root of 13. So we have that the last distance is the square root of 13. The question is what do we now make of what of all we have done? We observe the following. We observe that the square of the distance between A and B is equal to which is which is equal to which is root 65 all squared which is equal to 65 of course now the square also of the distance B and C is root 52 all squared which is what 52 and lastly the square of the distance between point a and c is the square root of 13 all squared which is equal to what which is equal to 13 what do you observe thus we observe that the distance between point A and B all squared is equal to the square of the distance between B and C plus the square of the distance between A and C. Between A and C. And what does this tell us? You recall our Pythagoras theorem. The last theorem says that the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of squares of the other two sides. And that only happens in a right angle triangle. So what do we observe? We observe that after finding a distance <coughs> between point A, B, point B, C, and point A, C, we observe here that the three, the three distances can just obtain, relate just like the three sides of a right angle triangle so what do we conclude hence we now say hence hence triangle a b c is a right angled triangle hope you understand why because I've seen that the square of the hypotenuse or of one of the sides, which is the hypotenuse in this case, which is which is 65, is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. This is what this is 65. This is 65. What BC is what? 52. And what is AC? 13. So you see that if we add 52 and 13, we get 65. So this makes triangle. ABC, a right angled triangle. The question says we should go ahead to find the area of triangle ABC. So we know that area is equal to what? Half, okay, base times what? Times height, okay? So this would give us half. And what would our base be? Our base would be root 13 times root 13. And what would our height be? Our height would be root 52. Root 52. So that gives us. So this is okay. So this gives us root. So if we break this down, so this would give us. 2 times 13 over 2 equal to 13 when broken down. 
of course we have broken down root 52 to basic form okay to basic form so you if you forgot what basic forms are you might want to go back to your source to recall what basic forms are so when you break when you multiply or if you if you choose you can just multiply this to calculators directly and you still get the same answer so you say root 13 times root times root 52 equal to divided by 2 and you still get 13 so the area of a triangle is 13. let us take one more example for today the example says you should determine or determine the type of quadrilateral having the points a 1 comma 1 b 5 comma minus 2 c 2 comma minus 3 and d minus 2 and 0 as vertices so very quickly let us sketch also on our plane to see how it looks like so we have the first point one comma one so okay this is zero this is one two three four five of course it goes on negative one negative two negative three negative one negative two negative three this is one two three four okay so the first point a 1 comma 1 this is 1 comma 1 is here so this is point a 1 comma 1 so point a is 1 comma 1 point b is 5 and negative 2 5 and negative 2 so they meet somewhere here so this is point b point b is 5 and negative 2 point c is 2 and negative 3 Point C is 2 for the X and negative 3. So, negative 2 and negative 3. They meet somewhere here. So, this is point C. 2 and negative 3. And, of course, the last point, point D, is negative 2 and 0. So, X is negative 2 and Y is 0. So, Y is just on the line. So, this is point D. Negative 2 and 0. So, let us join these points. Join this point up. Wow. So, indeed, what we have is a quadrilateral. So, these vertices A, B, C, and D forms a quadrilateral. The question is, what type of quadrilateral is this? And of course, you know there are different types of quadrilaterals. We have rectangle, we have square, we have rhombus, we have kite. In fact, all four sided figures are called quadrilaterals. The question is, what type of quadrilateral is this? Now, to answer this question, we shall once again use the concept of distance between two points. So, we shall calculate the distance between point D and A, point A and B, point B and C, and point D and C. So, I assume that at this point, you already... You already understand how it should go. So, the distance between point A and point B, okay, again, is y2 minus y1 all squared plus x2 minus x1 all squared. Now, if you compute this, if you put in the values, point A and B, A and B, so x1, y1, x2, y2, if you do this carefully, you arrive at 5. Now the distance again between point B and point C again is using the formula y2 minus y1 all squared plus x2 minus x1 all squared. If you do this carefully again, you get the square root of 10 as that. Then the next one is the distance between point C and D. So, distance between point C and point D. Again, you have the distance formula y2 minus y1 all squared plus x2 minus x1 all squared. Once again, if you do this carefully, 
I, 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 I suggest you, you pause the video and try to compute these values and see if what you're going to have agrees with what I have here. Again, it's root 5. It's, sorry, beg your pardon, it's 5. The last distance is this D and E. <clears throat> so the distance between point D and point E is equal to, again, Y2 minus Y1 all squared plus X2 minus X1 all squared. Now, if you do this carefully, once again, you arrive at the square root of 10. So what do we see here? So we see that the distance between point A and B, A and B, is what? Is 5. So this distance here is 5. The distance between point B and C, B and C, is root 10. Square root of 10. The distance between point C and point D is 5. Here again is 5. And lastly, the distance between point D and point A is root 10. Is root, square root of 10. So what do we observe? So we observe that in this quadrilateral, or on this quadrilateral rather, the opposite sides are equal. How? Side DA is opposite to side CB. And the values are the same. That means their distances are the same. Root 10 and the square root of 10. Also, the line AB or side AB is opposite to side DC. Okay? And they have the same value, which is what? 5. The question is, what type of quadrilateral has its opposite sides to be equal? The answer is what? Rectangle. Rectangle. Because on the rectangle, we say that, okay, the rectangle is a, is a figure that has what? Two opposite sides to be equal. So if here is x, for example, here also will be x. And if this other side is y, here also what will be y. And the quadrilateral we have here looks just like this. D, A, C, B are opposites, just like Y, just like y R. And their values are root 10 and root 10. A, B, and D, C also are opposite sides, and they have the same value. Therefore, we conclude that this quadrilateral has to be a rectangle. In our next class, we shall be discussing lines and we shall begin with the ratio of division of a line segment. If you like this video, please click on the like button and please don't fail to subscribe to my channel. Thank you.